Hello Frontline Teach, this is Val. I want to talk to you today about CD4 and viral load tests. Uh, this lesson I've broken down into five pieces. Uh, so this is the first video, the CD4 and viral load overview. You should next watch what's a CD4. CD4 results, viral load results, and the rule of three in that order. So CD4 and viral load, what's the difference? CD4 and viral load are uh, HIV lingo. They're things that you are going to hear a lot of uh, in the HIV field, um, but people sometimes toss them around not even knowing exactly what they mean. So we're trying to break this down for you. We have two columns here, CD4 and viral load. CD4s are a marker of the immune system and viral load tests are a marker of the virus. CD4 cells, higher is better. Uh, the more CD4 cells, the better. With viral load, lower is better, and the less virus, the better. With CD4 cells, everybody has them. Uh, they're a part of the human immune system. Viral load test results are only going to be found in people living with HIV. So these tests measure a single moment in time, they measure one blood draw, they measure one milliliter or cubic centimeter of blood, it's about a tablespoon of blood. Uh, so it's not a lot of blood that it's measuring and it's by no means uh, says everything that there is to know about someone's body. They don't measure how good or bad someone feels how healthy someone is, because health is bigger than just lab results, um, and they don't measure what's going to happen in the future. They, what we really want to do here is look for the pattern over time. A single test result is only going to tell us about that one tablespoon of blood. What we want to do is take a tablespoon of blood now, take a tablespoon of blood in three months, take a tablespoon of blood three months after that, so that we can really look at the pattern over time. Uh, so the, it can help us make treatment decisions. You know, one one dot here tells us where the dot is, but it doesn't tell us everything. It is as we get more and more results that we really know what it is that we're looking at, right? So if a result doesn't fit the pattern, for instance, that dot belongs, this dot right here, belongs on the previous page. What's it doing here? If a result doesn't fit the pattern, uh, redo the test because it might be a mistake. Um, if something seems off about it, it could very well be off. We don't want to make any drastic decisions based on only one test result. Uh, and there's no saying what someone's viral load should be at any given CD4 or what someone's CD4 should be at any viral load. So um, it's really important that, that we, instead of freaking out, redo the test and see if we can get the same uh, odd result or if it's something that's m closer to the pattern that we're expecting. So a key point to remember is that CD4 tests tell us more than viral load tests. CD4 results can help us guess who's at risk of serious illness or at death at the present time because it's a marker of how the body is doing. It's really rare to see serious illnesses in people with more than 200 CD4, no matter how high the, or low the viral load is. Um, it's really below 200 CD4 that people start to get um, into uh, dangerous territory with regard to opportunistic infections. And like we talked about in the first lesson, what is HIV, what is AIDS, under 200 CD4 cells is where the current AIDS definition rests. So um, CD4 cells are a really important piece of that definition. Um, most of the time opportunistic infections are seen in people with less than 100, C 100 CD4 cells and especially less than 50 CD4 cells. It's really rare to see them in people with more than that. Not impossible, uh, but uh, rare. So here's an analogy for thinking about 
CD4 and viral load. I call it health on the road. So here's our road and our car, and those are potholes on the road. So the car is a person. Uh, so it can be a person living with HIV in this. And the potholes are sickness or a rocky road, uh, right? It's a, it's a section of road we don't particularly want to travel. So the viral load can be considered the speed that the car is traveling, right? Uh, and then the CD4 cells are considered to be the distance to the potholes. So it's possible to slow down that car so that it doesn't get a chance to drive any closer to the potholes. Um, but if somebody if somebody finds out their HIV status very close to the potholes, it's going to be harder to put the brakes on that car. So, next you should watch the video called What's a CD4?